this is one of the most frustrating shows that I've seen in a very long time. And it goes to prove that Arnold Schwarzenegger is the definition of star power. Why? When I, when I went into this film, I expected something that would fall in line with what Arnold Schwarzenegger is about because I felt that this is more of a comeback for him. This is like the moment that he had because it's Netflix. It's, it's a streaming service where there are no restrictions. I respect Arnold Schwarzenegger to come back with a certain vibe with a good movie which we haven't seen in a very long time. And this is a TV show. So I, I had a lot of expectations. So when I went in, suddenly came into conclusion that this was a generic show that Netflix had and they decided in order to get it out there for the masses, they needed star power. So they just dropped in Arnold Schwarzenegger and dropped in Gabriel Luna, two of the Terminators. And yeah, that kind of worked. It gives the show a certain energy and a certain drive that is not common with all the other shows. Again, Arnold Schwarzenegger's star power is still charming. He moves like he's motivated. He feels like he's in. He feels 100% committed to the show and you can actually see it. But everyone else around him, ah uh, man, yes, this is where now everything just the first episode is interesting because it introduces us to what the show is about. It, it, it introduces the conflict, it introduces us, us to the story in itself. And the story is pretty basic. So you have Annie who has been a CIA agent, never told the farm. Then you have um, the daughter who has also been a, a CIA, never told anyone. So Annie is sent to An Annie is sent to some country to go and retrieve someone and then when he goes there he discovers that the daughter is actually an agent. And that in itself is very interesting. Plus, and the villain played by Gabriel Luna is uh, happened to come from his past. And, and so he actually killed the dad. And so this, he ended up feeling pity for this, for, for the young man. And then he kind of took care of him throughout the rest of his life, paying for his stuff. And so the character of Gabriel Luna has grown up looking at Arnold like a father, like a father figure. So you get that interesting family dynamic within this particular movie, and I wish that they could have stayed with that. Uh, what you get instead is something that focuses on the family dynamics and then has this other plot about CIA and the life of agents and you have all these action scenes. And they are all try they all feel like they were shot differently and they were shot for different shows and brought in together much into one. So you may be going into a serious uh, action set piece and then it, you cut into something else that feels more like a gag and it's more funny. There's this really dark thing that's happening behind the scene, and then you cut to something else that's supposed to be funny. So it 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 it, it doesn't really guide you in terms of tone. The tones are everywhere. It, one one minute is funny. One minute it feels more like a family show. The next movie, the, the next minute feels like a CIA spy espionage show. So it lacks that identity. It it has a problem with identity, and that for me was the most frustrating thing about this show because I was willing to show it. I, I was willing to watch it. I actually went in and was excited by the first episode because by the end of it, I was like, yeah, this is something that is possible. Yes, I do like what they're trying to do. I understand the concept. I expected them to do something better with the concept. I mean, this is on Netflix, the same streaming service that gave us Beef and gave us Sandman. I, I, I thought that they would ask for something that is much more better than just... Because this is generic, man. You've seen this, you've seen this in the 90s movie. Actually, this is more or less true lies. I, I, I don't know, I should have not expected anything from this. I should have just stayed back and said that, you know, I'm going to take whatever they're going to bring because for, I thought the producers would be smart enough to think that the, the concept of a CIA agent who has a family who don't know that they're a CIA agent and a generic bad guy who has a nuclear, who has a nuclear weapon, you know, those themes, are so familiar in in, 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 the, in pop culture. There, there are things that have been explored years over years over years. Why would you create an eight hour show? Because the show is like almost one hour per episode. It's like 55 minutes or an hour long episode. Eight episodes. So you have like eight hours of that. And, and they drag along the idea of shows Nika finding out the daughter is an agent and the daughter discovering that Arnold was also an agent. So that is kind of dragged on for the eight episodes and they don't do anything to actually evolve it. They don't do anything to make it interesting. I don't know if you've watched a show called Barry. Barry, first of all, it's shorter. Second of all, they approach it, they approach the idea of these spy assassins in a very different way, in a very toned down way. And they give it a different um, look and take and 
concept in terms of how they choose to treat the main character. They just don't give you the generic assassin or undercover agent. Or they don't give you that. They give you super interesting characters that you want to follow, that you, you that, that you as you watch, get to like and you get to root for. And you want them to make it despite the fact that they are terrible people. But in this particular show, they don't do that. They just feel like they are generic. If you are to... If you are to remove Arnold and place any other different character, say to in these two, it would still feel it it, it. it would still feel the same. It, it wouldn't have that uniqueness about the character that you get attached or like the character based on what they are going through. Yes, the father and daughter idea is pretty interesting, but it feels the same episode after episode after episode after episode. We don't see it evolve. So yeah, so that those are some of the things that I really had a problem with with this show. I, I just felt, I feel disappointed. I, I really, honestly, feel, felt like they would have taken. And this is it's produced by Sky Dance. You know, th these are some of the producers who make like really big budget Hollywood movies. I thought that they would just make an effort to make something original, something fun, something outside what we are familiar with. Now, in terms of performances, for me, it's only two people. It's Arnold and. Gabriel Luna because Gabriel Luna and Arnold have the presence, have the star power. When Gabriel Luna comes on scene, despite the fact is he even is in the background, when he's introduced, he's somewhere in the background, but you can see him and you can identify him. You can identify the character, the way he's just the way he poses, the way he looks at everyone. He's, he just has a screen presence. But here's the thing, we don't actually see him for most part of the show. We were introduced to him and then he disappears for, for a while up to the last few episodes. And I'm like, why? Well, that's wasted talent. The guy is so good. Arnold, of course, is all that. He's a, he, what I just said, he's a superstar, so you actually feel it ooze out onto the screen. And he comes with a certain energy. He actually makes everyone that he interacts with better. Every scene that he is with any other character, he makes the characters look better because of his drive, his energy, and how he delivers. Now, he doesn't deliver them perfectly. It's just the energy and the drive that makes everything feel much better. Now, apart from that, all the other characters, there are a particular team of people. Now, the team, the, the, the team on the chair, the CIA agents who are left behind to do everything behind a computer, uh, the agents who are in the office, for me, Oh my goodness, they were the biggest, ah, oh my goodness, they were the most cringiest, the, 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 the one-liners. There's this particular character. I have no problem with the actress, I don't know who she is, I've never seen her in anything else. But, the one-liners, oh my gosh, they were just, hmm, you just got to her, I, I mean, she was just planted to just drop lines, comedic lines, comedic lines, comedic, and they don't lie, that's a problem. I would go like her, and there was the other person that they were hanging out. In fact, when you think about this group, let me just put it this way. When you think about that small group of those three people, four people, it will remind you of the same group from Peacemaker. But the only difference is that this Peacemaker group was written so well, and we got to like them based on who they were and how they were written. These don't feel like they were written. This particular group feel like that group, but poorly written and only given one-liners to deliver. And, and, and how they deliver their lines is not believable. You don't feel that they are characters. You feel like they are written characters that were developed. They feel processed. They feel stiff. I think that's the right, so the, the right word to, 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 to use. So when you think of this group, think of Peacemaker, that particular group, but a much toned down, poorly written group. I, I'm not talking about Peacemaker, the go, the action or anything. Just the group dynamic, how they interacted, you know, what kind of people that they were, this, they tried to do the same thing with that group dynamic. And it did not work, man, uh, especially for the one-liners. For me, that was the biggest problem. If you are doing an action spy thriller, make the humor come out of how the characters interact with the world or the other people. Think of think of murder mystery. Murder mystery is not funny because of the one-liners. It's funny because of how everyone interacts with each other. The, the interactions, how they, they bounce off uh, information around each other and the fact that they've most of the time feel like they are fish out of water and everything that happens feels like a coincidence. The awkwardness of murder mystery makes it funny. It's not the lines that come out of their mouth. So for this, they try to deliver lines that are funny rather than just having a funny premise that makes everything look and feel funny. So yeah, that's 
that's fuba for me. I actually did not like this show. If I was to give it out of five, I'd give it give it a one out of five. It's pretty disappointing. Um, it's something if you are to watch this, it's something that you can comfortably watch while you do something else. So thanks for watching. Um, remember to watch what you enjoy and enjoy what you watch. So see you on the next one.